Hey, it's Bridget. I just, I love this microphone. I know, I know. I have said that I will put it on a boom so it won't be like all like sticking up like right in the center of my channeling. But you know what? Today, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. We are going to have a conversation above live channel with Olivia Newton-John in the afterlife, of course. You know, you know we would have to channel her because you have requested it so much. It's only been a few days since she made her transition and usually I like to wait for a while. However, aren't rules made to be broken? Yes. Now, the reason why initially <clears throat> I would not channel people until... I don't know, like a couple of weeks, couple months, a while after they died was because I thought it was kind of rude. I thought I should give them time to transition, to get comfortable before they have company over. You know, it's like moving into a new house. You want to kind of set things up, have it be comfortable before you have company over. But I've discovered that time it's not really a thing in the afterlife. And because it's not really a thing, it's not a their thing. It's not a soul thing. It's not a spirit thing. It's an us thing. It's a human body thing. It's an expiration date on our bodies kind of vibe. And because of that, I'm going to channel when I feel like channeling who I want to channel. And I'm sure you'll appreciate that, especially in this case. I mean, Olivia Newton-John is such a, feels like such a fun, loving, gentle, and genuine person. Everybody knows the movies from the Grease movies, right? Everybody knows. I mean, right? You have to be like under a rock in order to not know that. In addition to that, I'm obviously a, an excellent singer, an actress. She's had a great career expanding lots of different types of projects and experiences. And so however you know her, you're lucky. That's how it feels. Okay. So Olivia, would you like to come in? Yes. Yes, of course, Bridget. She is sharing. Okay. Very heart-based. She is sharing with me that she loves the ocean. She loves the water. She loves to be by the water. It's something that um, she feels a deep connection to. And it feels very divine mother energy. It feels like Mother Mary. It's just really divine feminine, divine mother. And then it also feels like she's acknowledging mother, her mother in the afterlife and that there was this reunion. And she makes me feel like she has two moms. And I don't know what that means. I don't know if she has like a godmother she was close to or an auntie or if she actually has two moms, like a birth mom and an adopted mom. I don't know, but there's like two moms she feels like is making me feel... I also see like a daughter and there's also like a Christy or Kristen name. I don't know a lot about her except for Greece and, you know, her music, like let's get physical, right? Like, didn't that make everybody want to do aerobics, that song? Okay, dating myself, totally dating myself, very much dating myself, but I roller skated to that song, didn't you? Did you? Come on. If you did, I want to see some icons in the comments below. Okay, let me see some of your icons about the roller rinks and Olivia Newton-John. Okay, okay, all right. So um, she is, she's making me feel like there's an animals thing, an animals in the ocean thing. Ah. I don't know if there's a particular like endangered species vibe that she's got or like an animals, an animal love and the ocean is in that and they're connected somehow. So I don't know if there's an animal sanctuary that she supported or like a coral reef re restoration thing that she supported or um, I'm not sure what the deal is about that, but those are connected. If you know, you can put them in the comments below. Again, here on Above Life channel, the way that I channel as a medium and as a psychic and as an intuitive life coach is in a very conversation style. I share with you the energy and information that comes in through me from a perspective of here's what I feel, here's what I see, here's the pieces of info I hear. So I'm clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient. 
And so I share that with you and then we put the pieces together. This is a genuine way to experience psychic connection. This, the way I do this, demonstrates to you that you can do this as well. This is not for the select elite few of psychics. This is for you intuitively to be able to connect with your favorite musician, rock star, or actor, actress, or your Nana in the afterlife, because you deserve that, okay? This is not an elitist thing, psychicness is it not. It is for everyone, okay? So help fill in the blanks below, okay? All right, so you are lovely. You have a vibe, a little bit of a vibe of kind of like a Princess Diana vibe. You guys, I'm serious. She feels kind of humanitarian. She feels very heart-based, super heart-based, very philanthropic, philanthropic, very much a, a very genuine, caring person wanting to just give as much as she could um, in this world. Um, she feels very much respected. She kind of feels like like this, I kind of got this America's sweetheart vibe, which is ironic because I don't, America's sweetheart, no, that's a different. Um, not quite right, Bridget. <laughs> like, okay. She's like, not quite right, Bridget. Like, she's not trying to be rude to me. She's like, you got that one wrong. But um, <laughs> just fun loving sweet, nurtured, kind-hearted. I mean, who doesn't love that? Can you share with us some advice? Give us some advice about life or some guidance. And she's acknowledging, oh, she's so sweet. <laughs> she's talking about, um, oh my goodness, it's going to make me, I feel emotional. Okay. Very much connecting through the heart chakra and the heart space, very em em empathic. She um, is making me feel like the heart, the lungs are filled with grief. She says, she's acknowledging this person right here that's doing the channeling, thank you. And maybe you who are watching who feel grief, the lungs hold the grief. Um, I am just getting over a virus, an illness that many people have had the last two and a half years. And so it might be a nod to that. And she's saying, I had that too. She said, I had it too. She said, it is harsh. It is harsh. It really is hard on the body. And she says, but it gives... It gives you um, room for contemplation, she says, to contemplate the um, the important things in your life. And she says, when you get sick, like I did, she's talking about cancer. She must have had, did you have cancer? You must have had cancer. It feels like it. Um, do I know that? I don't know intellectually. I don't know my brain if I know that. Do I know that? Is that like a common knowledge thing? Maybe it is. I don't know. <clears throat> but she's saying, when I got sick, I... She says, you have, you have a choice to make. You get to decide how you want to live. And she says, I didn't want to give up or give in. And she's showing me like experimental things like that. She accepted her fate, that her body would eventually, um, how do I use the right words? Succumb to the disease. That it was likely that that was the course, but she said she didn't fight it, like resist that as an outcome, but she instead chose to use her energy to best live. And that meant taking care of herself and using experimental treatments. It looks like very, there looks like a lot of homeopathy, naturopathic treatments. It looks like some experimental stuff. Um, she said she has the love and support of her husband and her family to be able to help her move through those things. And she says, you get very well-versed, you research a lot, you get very open. She says, and, in, and spiritually speaking, she says, you get very open. She says, you have a lot of conversations with God. And she says, it's about your, not as much, she says, not as much about mortality or death, but about life and, and mor morality, morality. Like, have I lived well? Have I been a good person? Have I been as kind as I could be? Have I, are there, are there places or is there room in my life to do better now while I can, to make an impact while I can? And um, she says, so I feel, I understand. She says, I deeply understand grief. And then she's talking about the death of her father. I don't know if that was tragic or sudden. And then I see heart, 
somebody, somebody close to her died of a heart attack or had heart issues. And then she s- shares with me. And then also I see a brother. I don't know what that's about. Um, again, I don't know if the brother's deceased or present. And she's just showing me, I think, family stuff. Um, dad, brother, and then or maybe dad's brother. It might, there might be a can't, oh, there might be a tie. So the men, her dad, her dad's brother, and then her brother or her dad and her brother. So it's either the brothers, the dad and the brothers, so the dad and her uncle, or her brother and her dad have something kind of, it looks like a hereditary thing and it's heart related. So I don't know if it's heart disease. Um, I don't know if it's like a lung cancer vibe that affects the heart intensely or what the deal is. I'm not sure, Um, but there's like something here. There's like this triangle and she's identifying in that, like as in um, illness, but not um, directly specifically the exact same thing, but kind of, um, I don't know how to explain this, related. Oh, I knew I should have paid better attention. I should have taken an anatomy class in college. I never did that. In fact, I got like a D in biology. So I ended up having to take like a rock class, which actually now the geology much better serves me as a psychic person, you know, crystals, rocks, all that. Yeah. All right. So. Oh, and she's talking about the throat chakra. Interesting. The throat having a voice. Ah, interesting. She says, it's it's a strange thing to realize that you have a lot more pull than you realize, than you expect. She says, especially in the younger generations, she says, like with the iconic um, presence of Greece and the movies and the, the theaters and the plays and all that, she says, um, the voice, realizing that my voice was much more powerful than I ever could have thought it would be, she says, then to lend it to a good cause to a um, a worthwhile um, effort. So like an initiative or a, a program or things, she said she feels very um, humbled to be able to have done that in this lifetime. So there's kind of the sense of um, kind of like surprise that that would be a thing for her. She's kind of feels like, well, I never expected that to be part of my life. Like I, she's like, I never thought of myself like that, that I'm like all influential. She said, um, like Greece kind of has this that this iconic status in and of itself. And she says, that is not about me. She's very humble, you guys. She's like, that's not about me. That's about everybody that created that is like just this art, you know? And she says, the fact that I got to be a part of that, it was was very much a blessing for me. And she said, it, it did change the traje- trajectory of my life. So she says, it gives you this understanding of how important one decision is. One decision. And she says, had I not said no to other things, I wouldn't have been available to say yes to this. And sometimes she says, um, God takes things out of your way that you might be upset about. She feels very, like, she feels very spiritual, I want to say. She says, um, God takes things out of your path that at the time seem maybe painful or you're upset about or hurt or angry about. And she says, and you don't know why at that time, but you can look back and now understand that, that that's what needed to be and that you did not know that at the time. And she says, um, so there are probably things in each our own lives. Like she's giving me this vibe of, um, your life right now and my life right now that It might seem hard or difficult or we might not understand why, like the whole question of why is this happening? Why is this happening? And she says, try to be patient. Try everything with her is so hard, like it's hard. And then she's really honoring the throat chakra, the voice, heart voice, heart speaks, heart speaks, heart speaks. She keeps going like this over and over and over again. And I'm getting this feeling that maybe she wore something all the time, like a necklace, because I keep seeing this necklace, like almost like a medallion on her. I don't know if it's a, it, look, it reminds me of like a sand dollar, like super connected to the ocean, you guys, very water-based. And I don't know, I don't know her astrology. I don't do astrology. She seems super aligned with astrology. She might actually know her astrology all herself. She might actually do that, have seen astrologers, be very open to that. Um, but this matters. There's some kind of sign or symbol here. I can see it. 
it reminds me of a sand dollar, like a starfish kind of vibe. Um, <clears throat> there's a story. Oh. And then she's talking about, yeah, wow, there's so much ocean, like the turtles and how they lay their eggs and then they go to the ocean and this whole thing and how beautiful it is when the, all the babies wake up and then they, they hatch and then they come out and they, they try to find their way to the, to the ocean and not all of them survive. And it's this whole beautiful story of the cycle of life and all this. And I'm like, and she says, it's this long journey to the water. And she says, and then the water finally reaches them. They're trying to get to the water and the water's trying to get to them. And as soon as that un unification happens, that un union happens, they get united. And then the turtle gets carried out. And that's how we are supported. That's how life rises to meet us and to support us and to, into the next place. And she says, you don't always know exactly where you're going, but you have this heart knowing, this knowing in your heart that you know when it's time to leave, you know when it's time to go, you know when it's time to be ready to embrace the next thing. And she says it really is, life really is a journey, it really is a journey. Um, she's making me feel like she was surrounded by her family and friends when she died. And that she had the opportunity and the foresight to be able to plan her death. I don't know what exactly that means. It feels like she was able to make some choices or articulate some choices so that when she wasn't able to speak or to have control anymore of her body or her faculties and such that she was able to have expressed that so that it would be honored. There's some things about her estate that will come out, I think, that um, might surprise some people, but not in a bad way. And like where she leaves money or how that is, is works, that kind of thing. <clears throat> It almost feels like her husband has a lot more money than she does. I'm not sure if that's true, but it feels like it. Um, and interesting. I wonder why she shows me that. She shows me England for some reason. Like, oh, is it like, oh, oh, okay. So there's a place in England that I want to go in my lifetime. And so it's like a bucket list kind of thing. And so she shows me that. And as she shows me that, it's because she was able to go places or go some places that she that really meant a lot to her that she wanted to see and experience in this lifetime. And she's sharing that she was able to do that. So part of knowing that you had this disease, disease that you were living with, she says, was the ability to be able to go do things when you felt 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 well enough to do them. And she said, so I had that opportunity. She's saying, I was able to do that. And she wants to... She doesn't want people to be like, so, so sad. Like this is such a tragedy. She wants people to understand that she consistently and continuously found the gifts in the days that she was given. And it wasn't um, that she tried really, she tried hard not to let her spirits get too low, to get too depressed or to let things get down. And she said, it's hard, it's hard when you are dealing with disease and your body just won't do what you want it to do. And you have days when it's just awful. And she says, but then, then when you have good days, then it feels extra good. It feels really, really good. And she says, so utilize the time you're given because you, you don't really know. But it's not, she's like, it's not about fear though. She's like, don't be afraid. So you have to live your life now because you don't know what's going to happen. So like, there's this fear of the unknown. She said, don't be afraid of that. Embrace it. Like it's, it's this gift, she says. Like it's, it's great that you know that because now you can actually make choices and do things. You can change things. And she says, you don't have to wait. You don't need to wait for something major to happen or to come up for you to change your life in ways that, that will bring you joy. And it's not about a massive shift or a building of something new. She says, it can, it can seriously, it can just be about not doing things that are, that are hurting you, that are, that you've always done just because you've always done them. It's kind of, she's like, it's kind of about letting go of the dead branches. You know, don't, don't just do things out of habit. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? What is this? 
what does this mean to me? What is the point of this? Everything, every little thing. And then all those little things, then the things that don't really make sense for you to be doing anymore, or you just do out of habit, she says, you clear those away and then you have room for more things. You have more energy. You might have more time. You might have more money to be doing the things that that really get you excited about life, that really help you feel alive, that bring cool new people into your life and give you great opportunities to, to just be more of yourself, you know, to be more of yourself and have more love in your life. So, <clears throat> wow, okay. That's awesome, Olivia. That's awesome. Um, I'm asking in my head, who are you most excited to meet in the afterlife? <laughs> I should ask you that. Is that even an appropriate thing to ask? And she says, like she's showing me, because so I have my Elvis mug. I just happen to have it filled with water to help my throat right now as I'm trying to recover from this virus thing. She shows me Michael Jackson, an amazing um, dancer and performer. Um, like if she was gonna fangirl, that would be one person. She said, um, all of the other things aside, I'm gonna say that, just the fact that he was a, she's, she's bringing up Michael Jackson, um, dancer, performer. Um, I think I don't know who that is. I can't see, and you're not showing me the name. Um, I'm super distracted all of a sudden. I don't know what energy this is. And Ed, Eddie, Ed, somebody. Who's that? I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Okay, just I'm gonna calm down a second. Michael Jackson thing threw me, I think. Why? Maybe they have something in common. Okay, I'm gonna ask fans. Is there something in common between Olivia Newton-John and Michael Jackson? Like, do they share a birthday? Did they do a project together? Is there something like that? Did she try to help him maybe at some point? Like, what is the connection? Is there a connection there? Is it like an a Broadway show thing? Like he was getting ready for his show and she had something? Like what's the deal with that? It feels like there's some kind of a connection. I don't know what that is. She brings him up and I'm not sure why. I don't understand why. Um, and then who's Ed? Ed, E-D, Eddie? Is that like her dad or is that a brother? Who's Ed, E-D? Hmm, interesting. I almost feel like it's strange because I feel like, like she's afterlife, she's a spirit, but she feels like a person still. So it's almost like I'm doing a session for her, for people in the afterlife for her, but she's in the afterlife. It's probably because she's recently passed, maybe. It's interesting. Okay, this is very interesting. I am recording this. I will say this because this might make a difference. Um, today's date is August 12th. Today is August 12th, 2022. I don't know if that means something. August 12th, 2022. So if August 12th is important for her, let me know that. Okay, all right. Is there anything additional that you would like to share? It's all quite new, she says. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's much more relaxed than I thought, than I maybe would have anticipated it to be, she says. What do you mean by that? It's like more of a peaceful energy than she anticipated, I guess she would say. It's like this, um, because she's in between like, okay, oh, this is hard to describe to you guys. I don't want you guys thinking that people die and then they hang out forever and they're attached to their bodies and they're in the afterlife, but they're both places. You can kind of be both places. It can kind of feel like you're both places. She's not stuck. She's not a ghost. That's not what's happening. But there's this energetic of, um, she's aware that as a full spirit, that the spirit energy is so peaceful and so much more at ease 
than the experience when she is connected or has been in her human body because of the disease. Because it felt like her body was getting smaller is how she's describing it. And then the spirit's getting bigger. So that's the way that she's describing like the transition into death with the body. It's getting smaller and the spirit is getting bigger. So that's an interesting, that is a really good way to describe it. Thank you for that. I think that will help people understand kind of how it works moving into the afterlife. So it was great to meet you. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, it was, it was great talking to you. I can't wait to find out more from your fans because they're going to write stuff in the comments that I'll be able to learn about you more than, um, than our conversation today has just opened me up to and started. So thank you. It was great to meet you. I hope that we've inspired your spirit today, filled you with some hope and encouraged you to live your life. This is your life after all, and you get to live it and just live it. Thanks for being here.